Hey, what's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another Drive Along with me, Joe Parker. I'm a real estate professional at the Santa Barbara Group, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. And today we're gonna be driving through Montecito. As you can see right now, I'm on Coast Village Road. We got a cloudy day here, so we're gonna have good lighting for this video. Rain is on its way, but today we are gonna go see a townhouse, a condo, both near the beach in Montecito a beautiful big home looking at Butterfly Beach over by the Biltmore and then we're gonna take it over to Ortega Ridge where we're gonna see a new listing up above Summerlin. So hopefully if all goes well, I'll be able to film all these homes and put them together for you. I do this because I love sharing my community, love sharing this town and it helps you guys who are thinking about Santa Barbara, Montecito to get acquainted with this area and gives you someone that you could reach out to. So. Feel free to subscribe to this channel to stay on top of everything going on in the real estate scene, the things I'm posting here to get you through all these properties. And also, I'll have a link in the description below that you could click on to get access to a bunch of stuff we offer people who are interested in taking their search to the next level, whether it's a, a direct link right into the Santa Barbara MLS, where you get the pure information, including reports and disclosures. I could set that listing alert up for you. Or if you wanna be more passive, just get on our newsletter. We're sending it out every two weeks, and it's got great insights about the market and things going on in the community. So right now we are gonna dive into these next few listings that uh, we're gonna to tour today. I'm excited to see them. It's a nice little variety. I think we're ranging in price from uh, just under four million um, all the way up to 35 million and uh, everything in between. So I appreciate you tuning in. I am going to make sure that we make this super exciting for everybody here. So grab some popcorn, get your coffee, get some wine, and um, let's see what we got here on the market today. All right, I just turned down Olive Mill off the new roundabout, and we are going to be going over to Danielson Road. I really like this little section. It's, um, it's a quaint little neighborhood in Montecito near Hammond's Meadow and Reef great surf spot. Um, we're also near the Biltmore and the recently renovated and reopened Coral Casino, a private club that uh, you could join for a few dollars and um, it's affiliated with the Montecito Club as well. So um, we're right in that hood. If uh, that makes sense to you, you're getting your bearings and uh, let's go see what this townhouse looks like. The stats on it are as followed. 1321 Danielson Unit A. This is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, and uh, they are looking to get 3.1 million for it. That's all I got for details. Let's go see what it looks like inside. Here's the street view on this one. Got some nice oaks out here. This neighborhood has more modest sized lots, and then some of this uh, density with these townhouses here. And, um, just a little bit um, closer together. It's more of a traditional neighborhood, like something maybe you would see on the Mesa in Santa Barbara. Um, but we're here in Montecito and it's got great walkability to Coast Village Road and down to the beach. Um, when the Biltmore reopens, you'll have that access as well. They always have some nice restaurants and stuff to do there. You can see these townhouses have attached garages. Um, some of them are really nice. I've been in a few of these. I think there's another one on the market that I've showed in a previous video. So a bunch of videos on this channel. You could check it out. Even more detailed dives into living in Montecito. But this one here, um, not on Olive Mill like the other one I think I showed a couple weeks ago. So this one is going to be a little bit quieter. We got a nice little patio here, it looks like. I like how you have this um, privacy. It's like once you get back here, you don't even notice that you're in that community with all the neighbors anymore because it's fully built up. Now on that side, you see the neighbor, but that's the only side. So that's pretty cool for how dense this little location is. Let's go see what the inside looks like. So upon entering here, you've got a nice big coat closet straight ahead and then this powder room, half bath here. The living room, that's good height in the ceilings, probably about 10 feet, some recessed lighting, fireplace. Got some slate tile on the floor. 
and some French doors that lead out to the patio, which is pretty good size and pretty private with lots of uh, mature growth around that shields you from most of the neighbors. So that's a really nice feature. Crown molding is pretty bold, big up there. I've got um, the little dining area here. Kitchen. Got the plantation shutters. And this is a garage door. Good size finished garage. Lots of storage, little wine fridge here. Looks like they got the epoxy coating on the floor. That looks real nice. All right, let's go see what the bedrooms are looking like. The landing has this workstation. So it kind of works as your office. And then uh, pocket doors open up into this primary suite. Carpeted. It's got a nice pitch to the ceiling there with some exposed beams that kind of disappear in the center there. And this has got its outdoor space. Nice balcony. Wow. Pretty tree. Got a nice little closet area here with built-in cabinets. Nice and cozy in here. It feels like it's got heated floors, but maybe it's just the register there. Glass enclosed shower looks good. So this room here. It's got the big mirrored wardrobe with some additional cabinets built in. This one also has pocket doors. Laundry room, that's nice, keeps the laundry upstairs. Oh, ironing board. And this is another suite, so that's pretty nice, two suites. Sort of, it has that extra little door there. So you could kind of close this section off as a suite or just close that door and use that bathroom. Maybe if that other room that's a little smaller isn't being used as like an office or something. So pretty flexible what they did there with the floor plan. Here's the front. Lots of built-ins like that, double closets. So 3.1. Get you living down by the beach in Montecito. There we go, property number one. What do you think of that one? I mean, pretty basic little townhouse. It had some nice features, but nothing super fancy. It's just a location by. Easy lock it and leave it lifestyle. And this is something special about this location. I wanna see if it's still accessible. Because when I was a kid, there was a way to cut across Hammond's Meadow over here. And it is long gone. I thought they'd still have a little goat trail to it, so. <clears throat> to go a long way. All right, we're gonna head off to the next one here. We're going into Montecito Shores and go look at a nice little remodeled condominium behind the gates right there with beach access from this community. You could drop straight down to the beach right in between Hammonds and the Biltmore. So that should be a pretty special little spot. I know on one of my other videos, I think I was asking a question, would you rather have the beach house or the beach condo? And two people replied, oh, do you see that hawk just fly in front of us? Two people replied, they want the beach condo. I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm all about simplicity. I don't want a big piece of property to take care of. I don't mind being next to people. You know, and so I'm going with the beach condo myself. So thanks for everybody. I love engaging with you guys. So all the times you're uh, you're reaching out or answering the questions, I 
propose in these videos. Thank you. It means a lot to me that you guys are watching and engaging with it. And it helps me with YouTube recognizing that uh, the audience is engaging. I think they juice the algorithm a little bit. So this is one thing about Montecito Beach living. You're next to the train tracks. I got the freeway behind me and the train tracks here. So um, you will hear the train going by. But same if you're staying at the Biltmore when it reopens or, you know, all these places. Um, down at Padara Lane on the beach, you're going to hear the train there too. So you just can't get away from it. But it's quick. It's not that bad. You get used to it. I guess on Padara, you might hear the ocean instead. All right. Skirt, skirt. Open house. Thanks, bud. All right. The gates have opened. We are in. I'm seeing a directional sign. I love that. Helps us not get lost because there are quite a few units in here and um, it is easy to kind of get spun around to figure out where you need to go. But we're going to go up here to the left and um, it looks like we will get some ocean views possibly from this one. I just saw the agent taking a picture on the balcony so it looks like she saw something pretty to take a picture of. All right, find my place to park and uh, See what this Bonnie Mead condo looks like. Some stats real quick before I transition here. We are looking at 1395 Plaza del Cernadores, two bedrooms, three bathrooms, listed for 4.2 million. So 1.1 million more than the townhouse we just saw. Um, that would be interesting. Which one would you prefer? All right, street view of this one. So you can see straight ahead there, the ocean. That's that beach access. You can get down to the beach, so really close to that. That's nice. These buildings here, you know, kind of a 70s vibe to them. Retro, it's all coming back. Just give it enough time. And... Uh, these have the exterior staircase with an elevator over there. So you got a choice, but you can see that elevator shaft straight ahead there. There's Randy himself. Randy, there's a listing agent, Randy Freed. Thank you, great to be here. Great. Oh, no worries. Good, good. No, it looks better with you in it. All right. Yeah, <laughs> like Randy, you got to go. Oh, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. So as I was coming over here, I was mentioning the train. Now you get to experience it right there. But yeah, there it is. it's not that bad. I think it's kind of romantic. I kind of like it. I like the train. Yeah. It's not bad at all. But this is incredible. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. They really opened up this kitchen nicely. Yes. It's like half this room is kitchen, yeah, which is exactly. what people appreciate because I think a lot of the gathering happens around here it's it centered that's why it's all open and all the cabinets and that wall there that's your refrigerator just that is oh wow let's check this out but dank oh slick look at that thermidor coming through totally hidden fridge looks like a cabinet one touch open and it shut that's cool under the counter microwave beautiful farm style sink I like the brick wall too like this here Ooh. Your okay. This is the marble counter. Okay, marble counter, very nice. Got the little dining room, sitting room. Yeah. And then you got this little balcony here. Looking at the community, looking at the ocean. Here's the view. Boom. Let's go see what the upstairs look like. So you got yeah. some under the stairs cabinets here, storage. Nice, lots of storage in this unit. There we go. There's a little powder room down here, so that's always nice to have. Good little window for ventilation. And then look at this cool mix. On this side, you got the wood planks. That side, the brick. So they're really playing on materials that they're putting on the walls, and then this kind of whitewashed wood floor. Oh, even more materials in here. I'm seeing some seagrass type wallpaper. Really 
beautiful bedroom right here. I mean, you are looking at some of the buildings there, but shoot, you just kind of got to get over it. You're near the beach. And I could hear the waves. I'm looking at waves right now breaking. I could see white water over there. So that's pretty special. This has got a nice little balcony. Beautiful trees in this community. Full mix. I'm looking at a magnolia. You got some sycamore, eucalyptus, pine. Here's the closet situation here. Look at this vanity. How fancy. Like the gold accents. Really like that. And then this frosted glass door opens up to a shower. Beautiful, cool tile. Look at the detail of that tile. And then this is gonna be the water closet side. Right toilet is. Stack your reading material. And then At the end of the hall here, we got another bathroom, dual vanities. Again, great use of different materials. Look at this, a really slick subway tile. It doesn't look like most subway tile you see. It's quite long, and uh, so the shape is a little different, and there's a little tone to it that's a little different. This has got a soaking tub in here. And then below the vanity is this cool little drop with this blue tile. So just a little splash of color in here. Everything else is pretty muted. And you got the European style washer and dryer there. And bedroom number two. Venetian plaster I'm looking at here. On the walls above this sort of uh, wainscoting type uh, this here. And on the ceilings there you can see the, the reflection. So that's that really nice Italian Venetian plaster. And some other Amenities you could see down there, the community pool, there's tennis court. So you got the security, you got the lock it and leave it, you got the location, got some amenities, pool, ocean, and just one more look at that. So I want to see if there's a set coming in. Looks like some surfers could be out there. All right, let's go down to the beach house. All right, it's across the street from the beach, but pretty special down on Channel Drive. I think that's going to make for some interesting discussion here in the comment thread. So we just saw a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse attached garage for 3.1 and a two bedroom, two and a half bath condo for 4.2. Which one do you like better? Clearly the views of this one are pretty spectacular. But when you're talking about a $1.1 million spread and you have one less bedroom, that's where it gets kind of interesting. Like, how do you justify these things? Um, where does it all come into alignment as far as picking out values? And ultimately, the buyer sets the values in any market. The qualified buyers are who are setting the values. So clearly, um, you know, what this has to offer. Maybe it's the single level, maybe it's the gated, maybe it's the ocean, um, is worth 1.1 million more. What do you think? Is it to you? Let me know in the comments here. And um, right now we're gonna go along Channel Drive here. To my right is the Biltmore, still under construction, remodel. To the left is the Coral Casino that has reopened. That is a uh, private club, super nice very very much um exclusive you know top dollar and uh like i said associated with the montecito club so you can get a, a group membership and, and join both of them i think it's um about 700 grand to join both i think the montecito club is about 300 and uh maybe a little more for core casino i could be wrong I think I'm in the ballpark. All right, so. Next, we are heading to this beach house on Channel Drive. Here's a street view of this one. 
to take a look at the beach before we go see it because uh, this is why this one's at 35 million. This is your neighborhood. Got ourselves a storm moving in, tides high, lots of rocks. Our beaches are not always this rocky. This happens in the winter when the big waves come, strips all the sand away, exposes the rocks, and then by summertime, the sand gets deposited again. And it comes back and then it's a little bit more sandy again, but Fillmore Beach is always kind of a wet beach. So this is it right here, the hedge. Eleven forty Channel Drive. Five bedrooms, ten bathrooms. Eleven oh four Channel Drive. Five bedrooms, ten bathrooms. Offered at thirty eight million five hundred thousand. All the city's operations. Hi, sorry, no um, social media. Wah. Wah, wah. Well, let me tell you everybody, you really missed it. And I'm gonna put a link in the description below to all the details of that a house there because that was something special. The property itself was huge. I mean, it had a huge yard, big old pool, a pickleball court, a guest house, a pavilion for working out, you know, next to the pool and then the main house. It was um, done to the nines, like really high end finishes, but natural, um, lots of stone, wood, had a lot of Zen vibe going on in there. So too bad they wouldn't let me film it for you guys. I apologize. I was worried that maybe that would happen with that one um, being the price point and uh, the listing office and everything. But nonetheless, um, I will have a link in the description where you could go ahead and click on that and see the details that are out there on it. So we are going to make our way over to Ortega Ridge next. This is going to be cool. This is up above Summerland looking out that way. So kind of on the southern end of Montecito. And uh, it's a new listing from what I remember believe it's a three bedroom but it has a guest house a pool a tennis court ocean views x number of bathrooms quite a few i'm sure and uh, i think the price is about uh, 13 between like 13 and 14 million so let's see what that's all about a little update on the freeway widening project here they're really hitting montecito now all the trees are gone so people were freaking out as they chopped down the last remaining ones but they're making big progress. I even heard of uh, how noisy it is if you're living here by Jameson. They're working from like 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. So that's supposed to be super loud. Uh, but gotta get her done. So this is what it's looking like. Lots of work going on. We're getting close to seeing some uh, lanes appear in the middle there. All right, Sheffield exit one before Summerland. This is the last exit as you're leaving Montecito heading south. They've already done the work here. So you got this fresh off ramp. You can see the bridge work here on my left looks beautiful. I'm so impressed with the bridges they've been building in this project all through Carpinteria looks amazing. Totally upscaled that whole freeway section. Gave it a very um, kind of a uh, elevated rich kind of feel to it beautiful stonework on the bridges one of the bridges even has trees along it along the median as you go over it over the freeway so i always thought that was impressive engineering to put uh, planter boxes in there that accommodate trees but here we go this is going to be our back door into summerland up to ortega ridge here see we got this little windy windy street that will s turn its way up to the tippy top of Summerlin which is a cool little community it's a coastal community south of Montecito pretty small it's got a little uh, strip of uh, 
commercial down by the beach or down by the freeway and, and you go under the freeway right to the beach killer beach there so if you ever want to see a nice beach that's a little less crowded and off the beaten path but has parking has um, park areas where you could go picnic or barbecue and then a ramp that goes down to the beach that's a cool little spot but uh, Summerland is um, also known for antiques they've got a lot of antique shops there some restaurants I really like the nugget that's a great little spot and on my left here, massive mountain views looking that way. And then a lot of these houses on the right are going to be picking up ocean views. Now we got some rain coming today or later tonight and tomorrow and then this weekend as well. And I've noticed on the, the chats of some of these videos, people asking about flooding because when Santa Barbara floods, it makes news and especially the Montecito mud flow, that was massive. That was worldwide news because that was so devastating and, and um, unprecedented. It really has never happened before um, in, in anyone's lifetime or that lives around here. So, uh, but, you know, with rain coming, th that was a one-off event, but we've had two kind of flooding incidences in Santa Barbara in the last like two years in our winter time. So it kind of seems like it floods all the time, which is not necessarily the case, but there are sections of town where if we get a ton of water real quickly, it just can't, the runoff infrastructure can't handle it. And so those areas are like the east side of Santa Barbara, as you're coming in on the freeway on 101 and you, you're you passing Milpas, kind of that section down in there, um, there's a street called South Sepuedes, and I understand that means get out while you can, known for flooding. Um, but it's not like devastating floods. Sure, it might cause some property damage, um, but uh, for the most part, people dry out and people carry on. Nothing like the Montecito mud flow was hugely devastating. I mean, it destroyed a ton of homes, took 26 lives. I mean, we're talking um, biblical proportion devastation. Um, but the typical flooding, whenever we get a lot of rain in a storm, it's more of just the streets... Um, on those lower areas of the east side filling up because the the infrastructure is just not quite up to speed down there yet I think the city's going to be working on it. They have done stuff like on the west side, but the east side is still sea level It's very low. So um, We'll see how we fare. We're gonna have big weather on uh, Sunday and Monday and uh, today's Wednesday So we shall see but um, let's go see what this one's looking like It's gonna have mountain views because we're on the mountain side, but the uh, stats on this one we're looking at 375 Ortega Ridge Road three bedrooms five baths plus the guest house offered at 12 million eight hundred thousand all right street view on this one here at Ortega Ridge this will land down on East Valley Road upper East Valley Road so you do have a access point that way as well in addition to the way we just came. I like the entry. Cherry blossoms lining this driveway, a nice little curve to it, gated. A cool little wood gate. Got some nice little mountain views over there. So, look at the cherry blossoms. Some of them are thinking it's time to bloom, some of them not so sure about it. So that looks like it's a little driveway off to maybe the guest house. I like how this motor court's like a hotel. You know, you've got this great little covered drive up area, pool over here. No, I mean, tennis court. Let's go see that while we're here. Looks like it might be a little tattered, like it hasn't been being used much lately. I think this thing's gonna become a, uh, a pickleball court or something else in its future. Definitely not ready to be played on, but you do have a really cool little drinking fountain right there. To the right of the entry, we've got this living room. 
great views of the mountains. Really interesting detail in the ceiling, kind of a tray ceiling, it's about 20 feet high with recessed lighting. Big fireplace on center here. And just got a really good feel because of all these windows. They go almost to the ceiling, so these French doors are massive. And it leads out to this view here, looking at Montecito all the way through to Santa Barbara. Look at that. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that because off in the distance there, that is SB. You can see Stearns Wharf and everything, so that's a really cool perspective. You don't get that all the time. And then the mountains. Step up here, a couple steps leading into the dining room, well lit, nice formal dining room. Kitchen, always everyone's favorite room. Got a cool little backsplash detail there, got the Wolf six burner built in. Island with a sink, skylights, got the bullnose on the corners, built in the 80s, almost 6,000 square feet, under three acres, but over two, I think it's like 2.8 or something. Wow, this room right here, this is worth every penny. Look at that view, my goodness. So that whole city view, I'm looking at Ledbetter Point and there's swell today so I could even see white water that as a surfer makes me a little bit excited. You can see the pool out there we'll look at later. Recessed speakers in here. And it looks like we're going to step up into a little office here. But there's really nothing little about it. How's that for a workstation? You know, when you're Done working, go ahead and study right over here. Gotta love it. Nice built-ins in here. Got some more outdoor patio space we'll go check out, but I wanna see what's happening in this breakfast area. It's a nice little, I'd call that a formal breakfast area. This is probably a pantry. Big pantry. So that's the front door, one of the bedrooms. Really good size. Dual closets, little workstation, and it's private bathroom. Wow, cool. This stone has got a hue of green in it make that out in the video but that's kind of neat I don't think I've seen that before skylight in here Look at these guys that's the elevator not opening but it's got an elevator all right another bedroom some nice built-ins another good size plus a closet more light just like the other one you've got this skylight in here so adds the natural light and we'll go to the laundry room big laundry room So a little breezeway, it looks like this is going to connect us to um, the little pool cabana or guest house. So I entered the bathroom, so they got a nice exterior door for the people in the pool, it looks like. Here's the kitchen of this place. And the living room. So guest house is really nice with mountain views over the pool. Probably be better to get away from the screen. 
This has got a vault in the ceiling. So it gives the space some extra room. A perception of more room there. I'm gonna go back out the way I came. Nice little barbecue kitchen area there. And before we go look at the pool, let's see what the garage is looking like. All right. Three car extra large garage. Finished, lots of storage. I like this little step up area. So this is for the cars down here. And then to work in with all this storage and everything. They got a doggy door. What do we got here? This is off the garage. A little flex room. Bonus room here. Game room, plus a work, workshop here. This is a nice workshop. So this is another garage. So four car garages total. Um, and this one here was used as a workshop. Take it in. That's killer. I love it. You can see uh, Burnham Wood and Valley Club golf courses. The mountains, some oaks. I see a jacuzzi. A little fire pit area down there. And this covered area has got heaters and music or speakers. So that's all real nice. Go upstairs and find that primary. I come for a little more if I can get her. Okay. I, I won't. I, I have to leave, but she'll just tell me. Yeah. Thank you. It's funny, it's like a sex thing. I'm just saying that she did. Thank you. Let us, let us know if the uh, primary sorry. retreat. Looks like maybe the his and hers bathrooms. Oh. Got the bathtub centered right on that view. That looks nice. Just the shower. So take it, this is the hers bath. Elevator drops you right here. And then the hers closet. That little wet bar. Don't have to go downstairs to make a drink. sitting bench there then you got <laughs> dual balconies up here it's 
Just loving the mountain view here. This is the high point of the house, so it's about as good as the view's gonna get. The clouds are dramatic today. And then, in case you need it to go to separate corners, one more balcony up here. Right there. All right, I think there's a little bit more out in the front to look at. Looks like a little storage shed there for gardening. And this is how you would come home if you're gonna park in the garages. Solar panels over here as well. And perhaps something worth exploring. I love it when we find paths to the places less traveled. That pool is a legit lap pool. Like, it's got a stripe and definitely long enough to do some laps. Well, it looks like they got the solar for the pool as well, but the old school solar. And then you got some terraced gardens over here that are not being tapped very well, it looks like. But at one point, there was a vision. They bid the rock terraces. So, a lot of untapped home farming potential on this one. Part of the two plus acres. Love the flowers, the purple and the green going off today. Yeah, we've had a good run of sunshine, so I think a lot of the plants don't know if winter's over or not, but it's not, it's coming. Look at that, just take it in. It's pretty cool. Some redwoods over here, I'm going into a little redwood forest. Little picnic table down there. steps back to the tennis court. Okay, it's gonna do it on this one.